So welcome to part two of our Health Bar um, X application where we're making uh, using a um, we're using a status bar a progress bar sorry we're using a progress bar as a health bar in our little game here and if you didn't get to see the first video I would recommend going back to see the first video and seeing how we put this together so uh, moving on from there we're gonna now go ahead and change these to maybe look a little bit more game like let's say so I'm gonna go ahead and take this button here and I am going to change the background to this into an image now I notice here I don't have any images in my project so that would be the first thing to do is to go ahead and add some images into my project so what you can do is just go ahead uh, go online download some images and then uh, put those into your project just drag them in there and I'm gonna show you that in a second So I have these images here, you know, they're in the folder. All I need to do is I'm just going to take this image. Um, let me use the enemy space game character. And I'm going to go ahead and drag it into my project like that. And you'll see that I have that enemy there. And I put the, my mouse over it. Um, it'll show the enemy character there. And I, I want to go ahead and uh, drag the rest of the images into this project. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that folder again. And I'm just going to take it off screen just so I don't have to keep on opening it up. And let me drag that eye. OK, there we go. Now the next thing I want to do immediately after I drag all of these um, images in here is I need to make sure it's going to be part of my project every time it compiles. So I'm going to select the first any of these images like the bottom one and I'm going to hold down shift and then select the very top one. And I'm going to go down here into the properties and I'm going to change to not copy to copy always. And I'm going to hit control S to save that. Now that I have these images here I can then go into my button. Uh, what I want to be able to do is go into the uh, the foreground, the background. Let's we'll put it into the background where the red is, and I'm going to change that from a solid color to an image. When I do that, I can scroll down just a little bit, and I'll see my image source, and it'll give me a list of the image currently in the project. Once I click on this arrow over here, and you'll see I have these images here so I'm just gonna click on the ballistic raindrop there it is and I wanna take those words out of there so I didn't mean to double click that like that I'm gonna take the words out so I'm gonna do a slow double click and then I'm just gonna delete it that way and select on the outside now the next thing I need to do is get rid of this border here so I'm gonna select my button I'm gonna go up here to the brush and I'm gonna get rid of this um, this border right here uh, I'm going to select the border and I'm going to select this first one which is no brush whatsoever. Uh, I don't really even need the background there and uh, I don't have to worry about that opacity mask. Now when I go, when I use this you see how because it's a PNG, all of these are PNGs except for this one. It's a PNG so that means I'll have the opacity mask and it, it already has an opacity filter or an alpha, alpha channel associated with it so I don't have to worry about a white box behind it or anything like that. Okay, so I have this one settled. Now let me go ahead and add this one here. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go here to the background. I'm going to change that to an image. Go to the image source. And I'll change that to health, something like that. Now in this one, it does make sense to keep the words there. But I'm going to just take them off anyway. And I'm going to get rid of that border. There, now we have two buttons that actually look like images that will achieve the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I'm going to hit F5 to run it. And now I have a button that adds and subtracts from my health. Now, I don't like the idea of, you, you notice how this button is um, flashing. This is a natural um, reaction of a button. Um, and so I would have to go in WPF, I would go create a style 
or create templates or something like that in order to prevent this from happening and that's beyond the scope of this so it's not just a setting that you have to change that's beyond the scope of this but what we can do is instead of using a button we'll just go ahead and use a regular um, image so an image doesn't have this reaction doesn't have these actions associated with it these behaviors so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'm gonna change this from a button to an image so I'm going to go here into the tools and I'm going to select image and then I can drag it or I can double click it and I'm going to bring this image over here and then inside of the image I don't need to go in the brush for an image what I need to do is go into the the source so I'm going to select the source and I'll select this evil eye and then on this image um, I can actually go in once I have the image selected I want to make it to where when I click on the image it uh, removes the um, the health but actually I'd rather do it to where when I put my mouse over the image it removes the health so let's do this a little bit different here these buttons here when you click it it'll remove the health but when we add our images when we click when we put our mouse over it it'll it'll either add or remove the health so I'm gonna take this image here and I'm gonna duplicate this by holding alt down holding shift down and dragging it across after I do that I'm gonna change the source to this image from the eye to uh, let's say like the hero okay so I have the evil eye over there and I have the hero over here so the idea here is so that when we when we um, put our mouse over this we're gonna be able to add or subtract from the health bar okay so first I, I'm let's try the evil one first I'm gonna select that um, that image and I'm gonna go ahead and change the name and I'm gonna just change this to evil and I can uh, So I'm just making that uh, evil eye, and then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to call this hero. And normally when you do this, you might want to just put IMG in front of that uh, to be properly coded. And over here, I'm just going to put IMG so I can know that those are images and not buttons or labels or anything like that. Now, once I click on this image here, I want to then go to the events. So I'm going to select on the events here. Here's our mouse enter event. So in this mouse enter event, I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to type into this lose health, and then I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to write that procedure in, in the back, uh, in the code behind for me. And basically all I want to do is I want to take this right here, and that's exactly what's going to happen when I lose health. So before I move on to the next one, before I try to do that with the hero, I'm going to go ahead and test this out. As you can see now, when I put my mouse over it, I lose health. And then when I click this one, I lose health. And when I click this one, I gain health. Now all i got to do is do the same thing for the hero. So if I put my mouse over the hero, select the hero. I'm going to go here. First, I'm going to select the hero. I'm going to go here to the events and the mouse enter event right here and the last event that we created was called let's see it was called lose health so we know what this one's going to be called called game click enter and I'm pretty much going to do this here I'm going to run that so when I put it over this it loses health and when I put it over this it gains health and same thing with these buttons the only cool thing about this is I don't have to worry about clicking and I don't have to worry about anything you know um, just completely taking me out of the idea of being in the game uh, this uh, like I said can be changed later on but it's beyond the scope of this video now the final thing we want to do in this video is actually make this look more um, 
we want some text inside of here. Now, there's a trick to do that. If you select this and you look over here, I'm first go to the properties. There's no text or anything like that or a label like that that you can put inside of this um, our new health bar. So in order to do that, we're going to select the progress bar and we're going to go down to the XAML and then we're going to surround it by a grid. So I'm going to open and close brackets and then I'm going to put a grid. Hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and close this grid. And what I'm going to now do is take this progress bar and I'm going to put it between the two grid markers. And then inside of that I can go ahead and add myself a text box txt box block sorry and I'm gonna name that it's gonna be mm, I'm gonna call that txt health bar and I want the um, I want the text align to be centered And then I want the text, uh, no, I want the horizontal alignment to be centered also. And after I do that, I can go ahead and close that up. Now I can add some text inside of this text bar, this text, text box. And I can just say content. No, I'm sorry, text use the text property and then so there we have our text we have our text box inside of our progress bar or our health bar and so on the next video I think what we can do is go ahead and add a timer to this maybe we have a health bar where there's a timer and then or we can say okay every time when you run this let's say if you get to 50 percent we shouldn't know that it's 50 percent so basically what we want to be able to do is indicate where the bar is inside the words so in the next video what we'll do is we'll put some indication inside of the bar to let the user know what percentage they're currently at so I'll see you guys in the next video if you have any comments Go ahead and put them in the comment section below.